ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل ومن يضل الله فلا هادي الله ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم so in 1989 i was run over by the spike wheels of justice vilified in such a way that i became a pariah and a scourge of this planet within the first few weeks there was a tsunami of media that was there to rip apart our lives and create a condition that allowed us to be a part of that other side of america where there was no equality there was no justice and they wanted us to live in peace one year later i lost trial and it was up until that moment that i had every bit of hope still left in my body and i remember they said you're going to be able to address the court and some said i should throw myself on the mercy of the court and seek the least amount of time possible but while i was going to school my mother was also giving me a parallel education and i was learning about the real dr martin luther king junior i was learning about marcus garvey i was asada shakur dimark vc tusant lobachor and many others and when that day came when they said do you have anything to say before we sentence you and i said yes and they told me to stand at that very moment that i stood up i began to immediately see what they saw when they were looking at me they had so much hatred in their eyes during the trial that it confused me because i was a 15 year old child but when i stood up i began to rise and grow and they began to shrink this is what i said to the courts in 1990 i was now 16 i'm not going to sit here at your table and watch you eat and call myself dinner Sitting here at your table doesn't make me dinner. Just like being here in America doesn't make me an American. Let us begin. Stress is the anger that is built up inside. Rage is the anger that is no longer built. Taking on a sucker that soon you have killed. American free will doesn't mean you can kill. And take another person's life you live your life trife. I'm a skill builder so on skills I do build. Created given knowledge to this wise black man. soon to enhance my words across the land i'm a smooth type of fellow cool calm and mellow i'm kind of laid back but now i'm speaking so that you know that used and abused and even was put on the news without clues some gave clues selling out like fools now check it who did what and who did who in put in a situation that you don't know what to do and some brothers go wildin when i down with them who would have thought i'd have to lock in i stand the cues checking the scene from how the situation was instead of getting facts the media made you blurred now the people don't know all they see is the media never hear the blame cuz they're constantly deceiving us the DA's wrong this is her master plan this case is not a case it's just a craft the sham yo instead of trying to get your name made it's reconstructing the crime that really pays islam La ilaha illallah being supreme over Satan but no man is allowed your summer science dropper on the righteous path so how the hell could i take a rapist path think about that and then think about this all my friends it was me they dis they dismissed cuz i don't really need any friends like that like when i really needed you where were you at i'm not dissing them all but the some that i called that went and dissed me 
like I was an inch small, like a rat, a mouse, not even a man, only accused, like the knife's in my hand. How does it look, me clock, now I'm shook, but like Matlock, soon the accused gets off the hook. It's real when she remembers and says, damn, the cops did you win, I stand accused. You people stop, this racial disperse. Hey, yo, you seen that kid Benson? He's in a hearse. And so we take it till the Benson hearse fields, whites had bulletproof vests, we had no kinds of shields. How does it look they killed a black man being black? It's time we take a stand. In our situation, you saw our faces clear, but not mine, not because of fear. It's because the black race was disgraced and for the Muslim, they must have felt shame. But I'm not to blame with the words you bought. The media took our words to paper, the ones the cops distorted. I told the cops truth like this and then boom, they were smacking my man Corey Wise in the next room. Now I know why the Rosses can't stand the Bobby Lawn. They never help, they just babble on. I used to think the people and cops were cool, but who protects us from you? I stand accused. When I took my seat, <clears throat> When I took my seat, the expression on the judge's face was so angered. It looked as if he wanted to disallow anybody the opportunity to say anything before sentencing again. For me, it was a very proud moment. As a matter of fact, one of the reporters in the room ran up to the front of the, 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 the courtroom and, and said, excuse me, Yusuf, can I, can I take a picture can I take a picture of your rap song? And I said, well, most certainly, yes, yes, indeed. She didn't know I wanted to be a hip hop artist since I was 12 years old. So when she took my picture, I felt like I made it. The very next day, that photograph was on the front page of the New York Post. And in big bold headlines, right above it, it said, Salam Baloney. Media treated us in a way that we were expendable. At the time, they did no due diligence. They didn't double check. They didn't fact check. They just spewed out whatever it was that they were receiving. And the worst part about it is that people believed it. They looked at me and my family and said, only the accident of time can help them. They began to write letters expressing themselves. This one letter in particular, people often ask why I keep it, but I keep it to remind myself, this is the actual letter that someone sent to us. This letter says to Yusef Salam, this letter is to let you know that your name has been placed on the list of enemies of society <clears throat> by the Citizens Army New York City branch. You made a decision when you became one of the pack that decided that Central Park was your arena and decided to attack and violate honest citizens who happened to be in the park. So just remember that even 20 to 30 years from now, some people will never forget and maybe the one time that you don't check your back is the one time that somebody might just be there to say hello. Now that's bad. That's terrible. Especially considering 13 years after we were accused of this crime, the truth came out. See, unbeknownst to man, there was a scheme involved in convicting us that had gone far back beyond what I could have even imagined. Right there in the founding documents of this country through the Constitution of the United States, I read the 13th Amendment, and I read it while I was in prison. I couldn't believe what I was reading. Right then and there is saying that they can take a person for the punishment of a crime and turn them back into a slate of slavery. 
Anybody can read that. But when black and brown folks read that, they're talking about our ancestors. They're talking about a truth and a reality that happened that they want to tell us to forget about. But yet, unbeknownst to us right now, that same system that was emancipated has morphed into the new Jim Crow. This new Jim Crow is further realized and identified when you look at the number they gave me in prison. When I turned 21, they gave me the prison number of 95A1113. I had no idea what this number meant. But every day, at least three to five times a day, when the officers came on the tier and they said, on the count, on the gate, I had to get up and recite this number. And one day, one of the elders in the community in the prison industrial complex, he said to me, hey, young blood, let me tell you what this number means. He said, the 95 in your number is the year that you came here. A signifies the first half of the year. It's only A, B, or R. A is the first half. B is the second half. R means that you were a part of recidivism, and you left and came back. The interesting thing about this number, young brother, is that your birthday's in February. This number represents and means that you was the 1,000th, 113th person to enter the door, and it's only February. I couldn't believe it. I looked at the landscape of the prison industrial complex and it told the truth about the reality of the 13th Amendment, that slavery was alive and well, that they took us and warehoused us in the prison industrial complex. And the worst part about it is that our fate was signed sealed and delivered. They say man plans and God plans and God is the best of planners. And so when I tell you that they had no idea who they had, you gotta follow me with this one. When you hear about the Central Park Jogger case, you have a tragedy of magnanimous proportions. But the Central Park Jogger case is actually a love story between God and his people. It's a story of a criminal system of injustice put on trial and turned on its side in order to produce a miracle in modern time. It's a story of a people buried alive and forgotten. The system forgot we were seized. And instead of a social death, we've emerged from the, from the ashes like the phoenix. Because as they built the fire to consume us, they forgot the owner of the heat. I got to prison, and the prison became cool and safe. The brothers in the prison said, we want you to be our leader. And so for the first five years of my journey that I had to go through, I grew through becoming the leader of the Muslims in the community. In a way, it was almost as if I was being prepared to become a motivational speaker. Every single Friday, I had to stand up and deliver the sermon to the brothers. Every day while I was in the community, in the prison industrial complex with the Muslims, I had to counsel them. I had to help them because they looked at me and said, how is this young man able to get through this? What I found out is that every one of us has a light inside of us. That light has been placed in us by God himself. This is explained in Islam that when a baby is born, he is over and she is over one of 400 million options. Imagine that. Somebody else could have came out, but a God chose you. And so not only does that mean you were born on purpose, 
but you were born with a purpose. When I found out what my name meant, it blew my mind. Because it signified to me that God is the greatest. That he could take a lowly servant like myself and put me in the belly of the beast in a similar way that a child is placed in the mother's womb. That I was placed in there and I was stretched and altered and made into this person that I am today. This person was what they had not hoped for and they tried to destroy it. That's who they were looking at, my future self. And so as I get to ready to leave you today, I want to leave you with this poem. This poem was written in my book of poetry called Words of a Man, My Right to Be. This poem was a mantra amongst many mantras that I would say to myself while I was in prison. Because for me, it was about making sure that mentally I stayed free while my body was in bondage. This poem is called, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. The revolution will not be televised. I can remember when that statement made me sad inside. Too young to be in it. Now I couldn't even see it. Why? Why couldn't the revolution be televised? The last poets, Gil Scott Heron, as I grew up, I began to see. They left theirs and I too wanted to leave a mark on history. A man in half and I wanted to bask in that task that set men free. But a revolution, the revolution, is where I knew I had to be. The revolution will not be televised. They didn't want to display the victory of those quote unquote lesser men. The revolution will not be televised. Smile, I know, because I am the revolution. Thank you.